Hey everybody, welcome back to another Q&A on May 13th, 2024. I posted this up this morning, so I don't have many questions we have, but I think there's like four or five, so we will get into those. First question for the day is SIBO breath test versus GI map pros and cons. Probably answered this one on the Q&A before, it's hard to say, but nonetheless, differentiate between the two first. So breath test is essentially measuring hydrogen and methane gases, more or less. Now there are a couple different types of breath tests. There's a glucose and a lactulose test. Glucose tests a little bit more sensitive. It is probably gonna have a little bit more accuracy. You're gonna get different readings based on where the bacteria is located. One test will measure a little bit better in the upper GI and another will measure a little bit better in the lower GI. You could obviously do both at the same time. However, there's still chance of false positive. Now, the other thing that you're not seeing in a breath test is you don't see all the other markers that you get in the stool. The stool test or the GI map, it's a test of excretion, right? So you're seeing what's coming out in the stool, which has some downsides as well. If stuff's not coming out, you might not see it but you are seeing other markers like immune markers and detoxification markers, things like secretory IgA and anti-gliadin IgA and uh, calprotectin measuring inflammation and elastase and steatocrit looking at you know enzyme status and fat malabsorption and things like that. Also a bunch of other pathogens on there, potential to see things like parasites and funguses, even though you know it might not pick up all of that. There's a lot more, right? So I think if we're looking at which option is gonna give you the most data, it's kind of a no-brainer. If you're specifically only looking for SIBO or you only have access to that, or you, you know, you're going to a GI doc or something and they, they're offering that test, it's not a bad option. It's just gonna miss a lot of other things that you would potentially see on the stool test. Now, breath test might be a way to follow up with the SIBO case later if you're checking, you know, is everything restored back to normal, something like that. But you're probably going to get more out of the stool test as an initial test. Next question. Do you prefer steps or timed sessions for cardio? Great question. I don't really have a preference directly. I'm not going to say like this is absolutely what everyone should do or this is absolutely what everyone should do because I have people that actually do both. A lot of that depends on like how much variation they're getting in a day-to-day -day activity level because really what we're looking for here in cardio is two things. Well, real, essentially two things because there, we could be looking at the cardiovascular aspect, some like getting the heart rate up and actually getting some cardiovascular exercise. But if we're looking at it from an energy expenditure standpoint, then we need to be able to control it, right? So the whole idea of steps is that you're getting more of a whole daily outlook versus someone doing a 30 minute cardio session and not knowing anything else that's going on throughout the day. Now, if they're relatively standardized in their day to day activities, then using a timed cardio session is probably going to be relatively accurate. And then also it, it kind of boils down to preference. I mean, either can work, obviously like people, people have been doing timed cardio sessions for decades and they work fine. I have done my own fat loss phases and things like that using both method, methods and they both work. Preference and context, really, but there's not necessarily a right or wrong answer to that. It's, it's a matter of expenditure and practicality, more or less. Most common nutrient deficiencies in your opinion? There's a lot of potential nutrient deficiencies and there's things that make that question difficult because it's not super easy to measure everything. Some things are a little bit easier to measure than others. It's not particularly easy to measure all nutrient deficiencies. When we're talking about like vitamins and minerals, for example. I can give you like a broad overview of this and talk about some of the most common ones, which are probably going to be things like magnesium, you know, a lot of people know that, vitamin D, maybe B vitamin deficiencies, looking at like B12, folate, B6, and those those do pop up relatively often. We can see those, you know, relatively easily with our CBC or homocysteine levels. Looking at potentially vitamin A deficiencies, I think are a little more common than people realize. So we do see that obviously probably throw iron in there you know we, well we can see that high or low but we have a lot of ways that we can measure iron through iron and ferritin and binding capacity we have a pretty accurate outlook of that zinc i mean there's copper i mean there's a lot of 
potential deficiencies. I guess these are probably the more common ones that you'll see with people, but there are a lot of potential deficiencies that we can see pop up. And there are a lot of things that can, that can impact those. You know, it can be things like just purely dietary intake, but then of course you throw some, some GI issues into that equation and you have poor absorption and now you have susceptibility to all kinds of different deficiencies that are not necessarily just dietary related. Then you throw in things like genetics and how you <clears throat> how you assimilate certain nutrients like our B vitamins lacking intrinsic factor, you know, these like poor methylators, people with MTHFR mutations. So I mean there's a lot of a lot of little things that can play in there, but there are definitely some common ones, like I said, that do pop up relatively often. HGH or IGF, which is better? I mean, the reality is like, it's not a lot of people that use IGF in its like pure form because I guess probably accessibility and costs and stuff. And I, I don't really, I don't know anyone personally that does or have I known anyone that has. And I'm not talking about like peptide, like LR3 or, or uh, IGF deaths or anything like that. I'm talking about like Incrolex. I don't know anyone. Now, what you have to remember is that one of the primary reasons that we that someone would use um, growth hormone would be because of the IGF release, right? So we have release from the liver, so hepatic IGF release. We get some localized in the muscle, like autocrine and paracrine systems. So we get a little bit of that as well. But that's, I mean, that's the primary reason, at least from a hypertrophy standpoint, when it's combined with the, the other factors that it needs to work or from a using it from a free fatty acid release standpoint for fat loss i would have to say that that's probably i guess better in the sense that like nobody's probably going to be using the igf on its own last question what do you do for fun well, great question a lot of my extra time i guess if you will is mostly revolves around like family activities. So we do, whether it's like family things that are school related or activities like that, performances, things like that, or something completely different, like a trip or, you know, some kind of other outing, done all kinds of stuff. That's the primary thing. Now there's some other, there's some other hobbies that I have that I'll, that I try to indulge in when possible. Cars, a lot of people know I like cars. If they follow me at all, I post that stuff a little bit, not a lot, a little bit. So, you know, like car meets and car cruises and, and things like that. Wrestling, both college and international Olympics are coming up. So I was trying to keep up with like the Olympic trials and all that. Ohio State wrestling in the winter, um, even a little bit of high school wrestling, motocross. Oh, I've raced motocross since I was a, basically since I was, you know, eight years old. I don't really race competitively anymore, but I still ride when I can. I like arm wrestling. That's kind of like a guilty pleasure. That's a, that's a, uh, sport if you will that i've gotten into a little bit so try to watch that when i can so i kind of have a, like a variety of things that i enjoy you know so I, I i think that answers the question but that is it for today i appreciate all the questions thanks everyone for chiming in and we will talk to you next time